Hey! Welcome to my channel. Today we have a brief retelling of the 2022 adventure comedy film. Be careful, spoilers ahead. The film opens with a scene where there are all, a beautiful and brave character with a PhD, a courageous and ingenious personage, insidious villains, ancient temples, and poisonous snakes. However, after a couple of minutes, it turns out that all this exists only in the imagination of Loretta Sage, the chiclet adventure novelist. She is so deeply immersed in creativity that sometimes she forgets to eat lunch. Thank God for the alarm clock on her wrist, because when it goes off, she recalls everything. Truth be told, things have been going wrong lately. She has zero inspiration, and readers require passion and kisses, not nerdy historical facts. Critics hint that Loretta is exhausted and can no longer give something worthwhile. Calls by her editor Beth are pointless because the woman prefers to soak in the bathroom and think about how to put an end to her writing career. But money has been invested in the book and needs to be worked out. Loretta has to lighten up, establish herself and head out to meet readers, even if it means pulling on a vulgar sequined pink jumpsuit and portrait incomprehensible chemistry with fashion model Alan, who happens to embody the book character Dash on the covers. In fact, Loretta considers him a vain and narrow-minded dork, capable of only showing the public a pumped-up body, and this almost derails an advertising campaign when an annoyed woman accidentally pulls a luxurious blonde wig off Alan's head and drops his partner on the floor in front of the fans. By the way, Loretta is unfair in her judgments, and Alan may not be particularly well-read and not too bright. Still, he is the only one who understands what is happening to a woman and tells Loretta straight away, you are stuck in the past and cannot move on until you are done with seclusion and start to live. However, the angry writer does not want to listen to anything. She runs outside and gets into the car, where, as it turns out, the kidnappers are already waiting for her. What's the matter? It turns out that billionaire Abigail Fairfax has read Loretta's latest book and is now sure that the priceless artifact described in the novel, Queen Tahi's Crown of Fire, exists. Abigail has already outlined the search area, an island in the Atlantic Ocean, where the lost city with the royal tomb should be located. To get the treasure, it remains only to translate a manuscript fragment. Loretta actively helped her deceased husband in his research. It will not be difficult for her to understand the hieroglyphs. But you must hurry, because the awakened volcano will soon destroy the mysterious artifact. As a kidnap victim struggles over mysterious writing on a tropical island, Alan goes out of his way to organize a rescue mission. He is sure that he must present himself to Loretta as a real man, not a pretty boy from the cover. It's a pity that he lacks the skills to save stolen treasures. We have to hire Detective Jack Trainer and ask for assistance. Fortunately, the former CIA agent does not mind. The partners arrive on the island following the signal from Loretta's smartwatch. As Trainer jams the guards rough and nicely, Alan follows him through the bushes, hoping to show himself. It doesn't work out very well for him, but it's not scary, because the macho detective has already found the writer tied to a chair in one of the tents. There are mere trifles left, to throw the lady, along with a piece of furniture, into a garden wheelbarrow, which so conveniently turned out to be at hand, and drive off impressively into the jungle against the backdrop of explosions and flames. However, they were celebrating victory not for a long time because a bullet strikes a few steps from Trainer's car. Now Loretta will have to fight her way to freedom with a lifeguard who can't catch guns thrown at him, carries a nail file in his pocket instead of a knife, and goes hysterics at the sight of blood but he is caring enough to save for his partner a pair of hiking boots, heels, a piece of cheese and a bottle of water in a backpack. And you don't really have an option because the police don't believe in the story of the kidnap. Beth's editor doesn't listen to her story and will do nothing about it. After some argument, the couple heads straight for the airport through the jungle. The writer suggests walking on water to throw the chase off the trail, which leads to a zesty situation a little later. Loretta was saved from aquatic creatures by wearing a pink jumpsuit, but Alan's body was chosen by leeches, so you have to arrange a short stripping session in the forest and shoot blood-sucking creatures. But it was impossible to deceive the pursuers. The sparkles from Loretta's costume led them on the right path. Thugs overtake fugitives at the most inopportune moment. 
They just got out of the forest to a rock with a picturesque waterfall and even found writing that complements a piece of parchment, but now they are forced to forget about the secrets of the lost city and climb up a steep slope to elude the kidnappers. Alan proves once again that he can be relied upon by helping Loretta reach the top, although in a very peculiar way. Experienced trials bring the writer and model closer together. It turns out that the man's lack of knowledge in the field of ancient Latin does not make him a lousy chat buddy, and Loretta is not a grumpy witch as she seemed before. Although Alan prepared awfully for the trip, grabbing scented candles and cosmetic masks instead of canned food, and a woman used his eczema oil for kindling, both feel a growing sympathy for each other. As a result, the fugitives go to bed in the same hammock, and everything is fine, but Loretta cannot wait to continue deciphering the manuscript stolen from Abigail. Alan catches her doing this, immediately seething with anger. Does the woman not understand that now the billionaire will not leave them behind? There is a new conflict. The writer once again realizes that she completely misjudged the character of her companion. Alan does not just show off half-naked in front of his fans. He is very responsible for his work and has convictions and deep thoughts that she did not come up with. That's right, don't judge a book by its cover. With the first rays of dawn, the chase resumes. This time, our heroes have to hide in the morning fog from motorcyclists armed with rifles, who are clearly very serious. And again, Alan shows himself from an unexpected side, constructing a trap for villains out of sticks and shiny shreds of Loretta's clothes. Opponents fly off into the abyss, and the lucky couple, slightly discouraged by what happened, because they did not plan to kill anyone, goes down to the village. Finally, you can report the kidnapping to the police, leave a record on Bess' voicemail, and go to the hotel to wash off the dust and sweat of a long road. Twilight is coming. From the balcony of a hotel room, arrested Loretta watches Alan dance with a local woman. The atmosphere of a romantic southern night is dizzy, and pleasant music spreads in the air. Unable to resist the temptation, the writer descends into the courtyard hotel and joins Alan. Their dance turns out to be gentle and sensual, a spark is about to slip into the air, which will push both of them into each other's arms, but a phrase from a song in the local dialect, well known to the ex-wife of the archaeologist, puts an end to the languid evening. Loretta is in a hurry to find out what the words, well of eternal tears mean because this is the name she managed to read among the hieroglyphs at the waterfall. What if it is not a metaphor only, but a real-life place as well? Now it's clear where to start searching for the crown. Alan goes to rent a car, but doesn't make it far. He sees Abigail, alerted by the corrupt cops, kidnapping Loretta and taking her away in his tank-like trailer. He started following them on a moped, which Alan managed to exchange in a hurry for a super-expensive luminous watch. The ensuing chase and fight on top of the trailer are highly calm. However, Alan does his best, and Loretta helps him by setting fire to the cabin from the inside and scaring the enemy with tales of an invincible warrior hardened by Afghanistan and Iraq. However, the kidnappers win because the forces are clearly unequal. Meanwhile, Beth argued with the police and FBI while searching for help, made several flights, got to the island in the company of goats and parrots, suddenly acquired a platonic boyfriend, and kept on the toes of local cops. She is not going to give up and leave her friend in trouble. Abigail brings Loretta and Alan to the island with the Well of Tears. The passage to the target is so narrow that it is difficult to squeeze through, but the woman bravely climbs forward, driven by anxiety for her partner. Alan will be shot without hesitation if she disobeys or tries to escape. Others follow as Loretta climbs out of the hole in the center of the vast canyon. Abigail is indignant. Why on earth would the king decide to make a tomb here, where no one will remember him? Loretta finds the answer and realized that this was the order of the king's wife, who wanted to spend time in solitude at the remains of her beloved husband. The tomb is opened, but instead of the expected treasure, two skeletons are found, one of which is topped with a crown of red shells. The inscription on the wall says, Every day King Kalman personally found for his favorite shell of a rare fiery color until there were enough of them for the crown, which was supposed to symbolize the love of Kalman and Taha. The intense feeling that united the royal spouses was the treasure of the Well of Tears, not jewelry and gold. The volcano is waking up. Enraged Abigail orders Loretta and Alan to be locked in the tomb while he hurries away. But the insane outbursts of the boss are rather tiring for his assistant Rafi. 
The man leaves the billionaire on the shore, claiming that he now belongs to the island, and goes on a boat into the ocean. As it turned out, a little earlier, Rafi planted a claw hummer in the tomb, which Loretta and Alan will get out. The canyon is shaking, the air is filled with ash and smoke, and the only chance for salvation remains, a turbulent stream that goes under the rock. But before diving into it, Loretta leaves her wedding ring in the tomb. She is ready to say goodbye to the past and open her heart to a new feeling. Loretta and Alan swim out. Beth hurries to their aid on a police boat, where the cold and angry Abigail is also found, who is immediately arrested. The film ends with a scene on the beach. It is shown that Loretta's assistant is reading the writer's new book to her granny and Beth is sunbathing on a deck chair with her platonic boyfriend. Loretta and Alan discuss the text of the new book and kiss on the shore. For Brad Pitt fans, let's add, his character appears alive and well in the scene after the credits, explaining to Alan that a person uses only 10% of his brain. When Trainer got shot in the head, he just switched to the other 10%. Did you enjoy it? Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can watch more videos like this. Thank you for watching.